Good morning everybody and uh, today is the third Sunday message in our month of prayer series on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Love, and uh, today's message is entitled Not Selfish or Easily Angered. Uh, today is also Father's Day and you'll find an all-age message for today with that theme in a separate video. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 and 5 Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. The Bible doesn't hide the fact that even among the apostles selfish attitudes and power struggles existed. James and John for example thinking just about themselves asked Jesus to give them the highest places of honour in his kingdom. Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. James and John were card-carrying members of the Self Seekers Club, and their request immediately sparked conflict among the other disciples, as selfish ambition, rather than ambition for God, always does. Mark records that when the other ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. They were indignant because they too were self-seeking and wanted positions of power and glory for themselves. This incident shows how little they understood the Lord's ways and how much they had yet to learn about loving and serving one another as family. James and John want to sit on thrones in power and glory, writes John Stott. Jesus knows that he must hang on a cross in weakness and shame. It is the opposite. Love is not selfish. The fifth statement about love aims at selfishness which is the root of so many of our problems and the opposite of Christian love. Love doesn't insist on its own way, says Paul, and this means that love is not seeking its own advantage this is especially important because we live in a society that is very individualistic. People in many Western societies are consumed with themselves and think that they are at the centre of the universe, which is after all the rightful place only for God. A consuming focus on the self is opposite to Christian love. If Jesus had sought his own advantage there would have been no cross. But in Romans 15 we read, Christ did not please himself. Our Lord came not to be served but to serve as it says in Luke 22. Paul too did not seek his own way. If he had he would never have endured all the grief involved in spreading the gospel and caring for the churches. But because of his love for Christ expressed through love for others, Paul could be very determined. I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking the advantage for myself but that of the many. For though I am free from all, I make myself a servant to all. I seek not what is yours, but you. I will gladly be spent for your souls. Three statements of Paul in 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Love is self-sacrificing. The enemy of being a good shepherd is a selfish heart. A wonderful New Testament model of a loving leader and teacher is Barnabas. He was not a throne seeker. Luke records that he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, in Acts 11 verse 24 and being full of the Holy Spirit he was characterized by love Galatians 5 verse 22 and all the qualities of love described in our passage from 1st Corinthians chapter 13 the first time we meet Barnabas in the New Testament he is selling land and giving the money to the poor in Jerusalem Acts chapter 4 Generosity towards others naturally flows out of love. As Robert Law says, love is the giving impulse. 
But what is most impressive about Barnabas is how he shared his leadership position in ministry with Paul. Barnabas had been sent by the leaders in Jerusalem to help with the newly planted church in Antioch. That was an exciting place to be. God was doing some new things among the Gentiles and Barnabas was at the centre of the action. Yet he always thought most of what was best for the church rather than his own position. Believing that the church also needed Paul's extraordinary gifts, Barnabas travelled at great personal sacrifice to the city of Tarsus to find Paul and invite him to come to Antioch to teach. This meant Barnabas would be sharing his teaching and leadership role with Paul, who in fact was far more gifted. Barnabas pushed Paul forwards and later Paul did become the more prominent of the two. As one preacher has said, Barnabas did not hang on to the ministry. He didn't have to do all the ministering or look for the glory. He was not a throne seeker. He was a lifter of people, not a limiter of people. His love was the giving variety, not the getting variety. Barnabas was a truly loving Christian, not jealous, not bragging about his own status or spirituality. He gave himself up for the benefit of others. No wonder he was nicknamed the son of encouragement. He exemplified the motto, great things can happen when we don't care who gets the credit. Great things happened in the church in Antioch through Barnabas and Paul and continue to happen in churches today through unselfish teachers and leaders. Love is not easily provoked. A quality of love is that it is not easily provoked to an emotional state of anger. It is not irritable. This is a very practical virtue for us and especially perhaps for leaders who have to deal with all kinds of different people and difficult situations. There's always fuel around in churches to provoke leaders to anger, irritability, offence, bitterness and resentment. That's why one of the biblical qualifications for an elder is not to be quick-tempered. This doesn't mean that one never feels angry or irritated with people. The Bible doesn't say don't feel angry, but it says that love is not easily provoked to anger or irritation. There is a righteous kind of anger, motivated by love and justice and opposed to evil and falsehood when they senselessly destroy people. But love is not provoked to be destructive through wrong motives. The heart of people, says Jonathan Edwards, is very prone to undue and sinful anger, being naturally full of pride and selfishness. This kind of anger doesn't work with love. When we get angry, we don't really focus on others, but on our own feelings. If leaders feel angry, problems can be exaggerated and miscommunication and misunderstandings abound and objectivity and reason disappear. When anger or hurt rule, small problems can become big explosions which can blow a church to pieces. I am convinced, says the writer of our study, that much more damage is done to churches by out of control anger or hurt and we care to admit it is a big problem. As Christians when we face conflict and relational pain which are very very difficult things we are to be spirit controlled and self-controlled as it says in Galatians 5. Out of control reactions are works of the flesh and of the devil there is an old saying that when you spill over a vase, what's inside is what comes out. When you're dealing with somebody who is disagreeable or hurt or simply sees things differently from you, what spills out from your heart? 
we have to take these matters seriously before the Lord and guard ourselves from our tendency to self-justification. The scriptures say, let everybody be slow to anger, for human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. That's in James chapter 1 verses 19 to 20. May the Lord bless this reading to us. Shall we pray? Lord, these are difficult matters for us and they challenge us to look seriously into our own hearts. Help us, Lord, when we think about ourselves, not to point the finger at others and say they are to blame for these things, but to listen carefully to the voice of your Spirit, which is determined, though gentle, to point out to us our own weaknesses and failings. Every one of us has more progress to make in these areas. Help us to focus during the week ahead on our own hearts and to listen carefully to what you're saying to us as individuals and as a church. Let us not be selfish, Lord, and let us not be easily provoked, but to see all things through your Spirit's wisdom and to see one another in the light of the cross. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.